What's going on, everybody? Um, happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Myself and my boy X. X, how you doing today? Doing pretty good. Uh, pretty solid. We're doing. We're having a solid Wednesday to us. Yeah, that background that shirt says everything. <laughs> so, you guys, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about Bad Bunny's latest album Un Verano Sin Ti, A Summer Without You for those who don't know Spanish and I'm just gonna say something small X and then I'm gonna give it to you because you're the biggest you're, you're the biggest Bad Bunny fan that I know so I'm just gonna say this um, because I want you to go first usually my sweet spot for albums are 16 songs I feel like when an artist puts 16 songs, it's good for me. However, Bad Bunny went and did 23 songs, which I think that's the most he's done throughout all of his albums so far. And, but this album, for us, for an album that's 23 songs, I can't remember what was the last time that I heard an album this long that I had to listen to it at least two or three times in less than a week. That's how much I enjoy the album. I loved it. This is the album of the summer. You're gonna be hearing it in cars. You're gonna be hearing it at the beach, a vacation. Just phenomenal. And uh, this album, it is, I won't say it's just a pop album. He's very versatile. He brings some merengue into it, some electronics, some reggaeton. Like it's a very versatile album. Bad Bunny is one of those artists that he'll make you dance, but he'll make you cry and he'll make you think as well. So not every artist can do that, can bring all those elements into an album. So I'm gonna let you go take it from there and I'll respond to what you have to say. Uh, I am, you know, to, to my friends and family, I'm very known as the Bad Bunny guy. I am a huge fan of the guy. Um, I've been listening to him since he was, you know, doing features. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, before we continue, I'm not one of those who gatekeep the era of Bad Bunny in 2016. I just like, I just want to put that out there. But I personally was a fan since, you know, the beginning. Um, the trans, the, the, the transcending uh, um, route that his career has gone, you know, from Por Siempre till now, Un Verano Senti, it has been very amazing. It, uh, it, I, one of the things that I love about this album the most is that, and not just this album, it's just the changes in every different album that he brings out. He's always gonna give you a different sound or a different flow. Um, Bad Bunny, that's what, he, that's what he does best. He's gonna give you a different flow with every album that he drops. And I feel like with this one, we got, uh, we got a nice um, summer chill vibe. And it was something that I predicted before, you know, when he announced the, uh, the date of the album dropping. He g really gave us that vibe of summery, um feel good vibes i it, 23 songs holy crap too by the way like who, when you when you think about an artist releasing 23 tracks you try to find a, a a reasoning or a belief like how the hell does this person get it done i mean he's coming off uh the whole wrestlemania thing he's coming off the whole tour coming out with the with, with, with the albums that he's been coming out with where does he find the time to make all this music and make it sound so damn good um all in all from top to bottom yes you are right he does bring a lot of different um flair to the songs it's not just all perreo 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 he also has um powerful messages in one of the songs especially the one andrea we we, we touch up on a little bit later uh he he really has the ability to showcase artists that i've never heard of before to make me think hmm, who is this guy who is this guy for example jay cortez i found out about him you know i knew about him but i found out about him through the no me conoce remix and that's jay cortez's song but when bad bunny gets in it you know he makes the song just more extra more, more that much more fun and with through bad bunny I, I found out about jay cortez and through bad bunny I'm, I'm finding out about different artists as well Shout out to him to bringing Tony Dice to, to the album, which was like, holy shit. I thought this guy was like retired or like, you know, uh, uh, that, that, you know, don't permit it. But, you know, I thought he was dead or something like where the fuck was Tony Dice at? And then out of nowhere, 
he has him here in a song called La Corriente, which, holy crap, like slowly and slowly, it's becoming a, a, a good track. You know, it, it's becoming one of those tracks in where like I'm enjoying it much more, much more. It was very, I was skeptical. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, uh, 23 songs, I was like, holy crap. Um, am I going to, how many bangers are going to come out of this album? Um, is it, it are, are they all hits? Are they all misses? Or, or is it more, is it more ratioed from one, one end to the other? Who knows? But the more I've listened to this album, I haven't stopped jamming to this album since it came out. Matter of fact, when it did came out, um, I was at karaoke, which I do on Thursday. So when karaoke was over after 12, we put on the Bad Bunny album. We listened it from front to back. We had a little listening party. So you can only imagine, Mike, I've been listening to this album since Friday morning, I would say 1 a.m. <laughs> and haven't stopped since. I've listened to it top to bottom and I've, I've, I've put it on shuffle. And it's just one of those sounds that you just can't stop listening to. Tony Dice appearing on this album, Coming by Surprise. Uh, Después de la Playa is one of my favorite songs. Mm. It's the most energetic track of the album. And because from Ministry is like very slow um, about, you know, being adventurous and making plans after a, after a beach thing. But then um, when I heard the beat, I was like, oh, shit. Um, but that's Bad Bunny for you. But then I thought to myself, where did I hear this song? And I'm like, idiot. Omega, duh. Because as soon as I heard the beat, um, I was like, well, this is sound familiar. And it's Omega. Omega be making those, be having those kinds of beats in his song. Um, but yeah, that's the most, that, that's my, one of my favorites. That's Wes de la Playa. Another one, Ojitos Bellos. I love the, the, the hook of the song and the person, yeah. and you're right, he has artists in, in the album that I never even heard of. So um, I'm trying to look for the name. Hold up, give me a minute. They, I think as, for they audience, by... as for audience, I had to write all of this down because I want to make sure that I tackle everything. Bomba es estero, estereo, yeah. Estereo, I never, yeah, I never heard of that group or, or that artist, but thank God, um, it was on this track because the hook is what made that strong, that song much more strong. And ojitos bellos in English, guys. Um, beautiful eyes, cute eyes, however you wanna, um, say it. Uh, it's and it's tiny. Let's talk about tiny. Tiny produced, oh, man, yeah. tiny produced nine of the twenty three tracks. He's one of the best producers in the reggaeton genre right now. And mm -hmm. this song is one of my favorite produced songs from Tiny. Um, so that's um, phenomenal. The, what I love about the vibe of this song is that it has trumpets, um, fresh beat, high vocals. Um, and just with Bad Bunny's voice through the lyrics, it makes the song um, that much strong. Party, Party featuring Raui Alejandro is one of my favorites. Um, like, come on, come on. Like, hey, shout out, it, I'm sorry, what? sorry. To cut you. It just, it, I get excited too talking about it. And shout out to him to put in the sample of uh, uh, Javi Helmoso on the end. Ooh, <laughs> like, like how, like how culture shocking can, how much more culture shocking can you be? Like, Bunny's like one of us. Like we've been we've been watching Javi's Hermoso on the gram and on the socials, you know, being going viral with all his, you know, a positive uh, everything. And then for him to put him on the album, it was like, wow, you actually acknowledge these people. So that, you know, kudos to Bunny for that, man. Fari, 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 fari. Hmm. <laughs> and of course, the collaboration with Jay Cortez. Um Tarot, Taro, how do you pronounce it? That's one of my mm -hmm. other favorites in the album. Bad Bunny and Jay Cor and when Bad Bunny and Jay Cortez come together, is magic. And No Me Conoces remix. And just like you, I found out uh, through ba um, Jay Cortez through Bad Bunny. So you have um, No Me Conoces, Daki T, and now Tarot. I mean, these guys, when they're together, is magic.
Pure Magic. En cómo se, en cómo se siente remix. Don't forget cómo se siente. Yes, one yes, one, that's another one. That, 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 that one right there, that was very near to my heart. <laughs> Important songs in the album. El Apagón. And El Apagón is basically, you know, talking about the Hurricane Maria and Power Age. So that was one of the deepest tracks in the album. Uh, what else? What else? Also, There's also, another song with, and I forgot to write this down. Oh, um, I think uh, the one with full meaning, I think you have to, you're referring to Andrea. Track 19, uh, named Andrea. I don't know if you, you got to listen to it, but Andrea is about... Um, Andrea Ruiz, right? It's about one. her, right? Yeah, the Puerto Rican who was trying to seek protection through the court for, for you know, a, a, a scorn ex or, or or boyfriend husband i believe and and the, the the court wouldn't give her uh the protection and then she ended up murdered by the by the that love her and although that the lyrics don't fully go into detail about what happened it just goes to show what the struggles of women have gone through and are going through uh, all over the world and also in Puerto Rico. So that was another uh, beautiful song for him to put out there, you know, and to empower the women out there. And that's one thing that he's always done. He's always empowering everybody in, in no matter what uh, race, color, or creed you're coming from. And that's that's that was a beautiful track to listen to by him. Most definitely. There is another track that I forgot to write down. I think it's called Aguacero. Their um, body, as a matter of fact. My man, I love the sound effects of the rain at the start of the at the at the start of the the song. The sound effects, the production is just orgasmic. Um, but I had to laugh because us knowing how Bad Bunny is, we know how raw he can be with his lyrics. As soon as I heard that opening verse, I started laughing. <laughs> oh my god i started laughing but you know it's a conejo malo you know for you so yeah but i i like the the production of that song the sound effects of the rain um set the tone of what the song was going to be about uh what else me fui I de really vacacion Go ahead. Oh, me, no, no, we, 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 me, fui, eh, me fui de vacaciones, yeah. Yeah, me fui de vacaciones is also one of my favorites. Guys, um, for the viewers out there, this album, there's just so many good songs. There's so many good songs. And me, per, me personally, I'm very picky and very harsh critiquing which one is my favorites from an album. But this album, we're talking about like six, seven, eight, nine songs. Bunny is gonna dominate the Lion Awards. I can oh, see. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! He even won a, an award while on tour. He was getting ready to perform. He got the phone call that he won an album. <laughs> that he won a Grammy for the album that he was just about to perform. Like, how insane is that? Um, well, uh, uh, I, I, another song that I'd like to pinpoint also is "Dos Mil Say, which is track um, fifteen. With, that comes after Ojitos Lindos. And I like it due to the fact that it really gave me that 2016 Bad Bunny vibe. Like, it really, like, when you listen to the song, it gives you the vibes of, like, oh, shit, this sounds like when he started. I think the only thing that was left in that track was for him to say, hear this music at the end of the, of the track when he was with uh, Hear This Music. But that's the type of vibe that he gave me right there. Like, holy crap, that's like a nod to all the, 2000, all the listeners who've been listening for years now. Um, I... I, I wanted to ask you one question, Mike, and and that is, how do you feel about Kajaita being in this album, closing out this album? Because I got my thoughts, but I want to hear your thoughts. Um, I'm glad you asked me that, because I was thinking a lot about it. it come, I, th I felt like it was odd, because this was released in 2019. Cayeta was released in 2019 and nobody can tell me different because we were jamming to Cayeta when we were at the cruise, which was the final vacation we took before the pandemic. Yeah. And that was <laughs> December, 2019. Cayeta came out like in late May, around my birthday, it came out Cayeta, but that was in the streets all over the place in 2019. 
So the fact wow, that we're yeah. in 20, so the fact that we're in 2022 and he added that as the last song in the album, I didn't know how to make, I didn't know how to make about that. Um, but, um, but it's not one of those things where I made it too much of a big deal out of it because it's still a, a great track and it's with Tiny, of course. Only thing mm-hmm. I could say is that it caught me by surprise that he decided to add that single to the album, which came out like three years ago. But yeah, I don't, I'm not sweating I think, it. I think, yeah, I'm not sweating it either. I think um, the song closing out, that song closing out the album, I think it was a pretty good idea. When you come to think about it, if you watch the the video of Kajai, that you see how everything ends with him in the beach with the girl that he, you know, he was, you know, trying to make a move on and whatnot. And he ends up with her um, at the beach on a carousel. So it's kind of like symbolic. It comes all full circle when it comes to, um, how, how, how should I mention it? How should I put it, I would say. So the album is called Un Verano Sin Ti. Throughout the whole album, we're experiencing a summer without the one that he wants to be with. And with Callaita, it all ends with him and that person. So it all makes sense for Callaita, for, for who would have thought that Callaita was the ending to Un Verano Sin Ti? When it comes to, you know, uh, uh, how can I say? I would say in a symbolic kind of way. <laughs> I'm not trying to be, you know, trying to, trying to uh, 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 guard it too much but yeah in a symbolic kind of way I think it was a beautiful way to end the album then again Callaita still slaps to this day everybody doesn't I, I, I don't know one person that's gotten tired of Callaita so yes I think it, and, and, and on top of that it meshes the song meshes well with the album if you come to think about it I'm gonna have to rewatch the music video to Callaita okay. because I haven't seen it in a while so now that you mentioned that um, thank you I'll get to that right when I'm done with this so I just got to add two more things. Number one. Okay. Um, uh, what is it? Después de la playa. I know I already mentioned this, but I forgot to say this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it draws some, some controversy or criticism that he did, doesn't have like, no, he didn't have like a, a feature artist that is Dominican for that song or in the album, we'll have people maybe raise their eyebrows for those who are anti Bad Bunny fans and mm-hmm. that are those, um, and that are Dominican as well. Like us, we're Dominican, but you know, we know what's right and right and what's wrong is wrong. And we're not the, I can only speak for you and I, we're both the, we're, we're the anti um, crying and complain kind of guys because nowadays we're in the, golden era of whining and complaining about everything but we're mm-hmm. politically incorrect we were raised in a way that we, we we're not soft when it, and we don't complain about a bunch of little things like that so um i just think i just say that I appreciate a great album from an artist that is in the prime of his career um and i see it as a way of him embracing like it's cool to see a Puerto Rican artist embracing Dominican culture, embracing the music, just, and vice versa. You know, um, we love reggaeton, we love um, salsa, we love everything that Puerto Rico brings into the arts and the culture. So, um, but yeah, that's one thing that it wouldn't be surprising if somebody will say, "Oh, Bad Bunny," you know, he sung, um, he used the merengue band, you know, on a merengue production, and he didn't have no artists, he didn't have Omega there. He didn't have no Dominican artists, but you know, I don't, I don't see a big fuss over that. Um, if, if, that's if I'm not thing. mistaken, Go if ahead. I'm not mistaken, I'm sorry. I, I think he 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 asked permission for Omega to so he could use that that sample or that 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 beat. Um, but yeah, I, I I mean, it would have been cool for him to feature a Dominican artist, but you know, I, I to be honest, I have no beef with it. <laughs> Un verano, since he dropped on Friday. Bad Bunny became Spotify's most streamed artist ever in a single day. He reached 183 million plays and surpassed a record previously held by Drizzy Drake. That is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. And the album also became the most listened to album on Spotify so far in 2022. And like I said earlier, 
<laughs> we're, like, not even yeah. have, we're not even halfway through the year. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey man, you know that's <laughs> that's amazing. Um, <laughs> that's I, I'm just blown away by that. But like I said earlier in this recording, I have I can't recall when was the last time, but I this album for an album to be 23 songs, this guy Triple M Miguel Mike Medina to listen to the album twice, almost three times. In less than a week for a 23 album song and my sweet spot is 16 that says something <laughs> that says something so bad bunny you know he won i mean it's hard not to like the guy you know even if you're not a big fan of him he's hard not to like he's that good mm -hmm. he's that talented he knows how to market himself um what else like by the way, someday, hey, hey. So one day, no, going, I'm, I'm just gonna say this because it's important. One day no, we're going, gonna go. look back and say, "Yo, Bad Bunny was a monster in his prime. We were there in his peak years, from start mm -hmm. to finish." Like this decade so far, in reggaeton, nobody touches Bad Bunny. You're a Bad Bunny guy. Me personally, I'm an Osuna guy, but Bad mm -hmm. Bunny is a fucking <laughs> he's like a cheat code he's the champ <laughs> he's the champ El <laughs> <Italian to peak. laughs> what Bad Bunny is to reggaeton this decade is mm -hmm. what LeBron was 2012-2013 with Miami Heat in terms oh, of oh, yeah. in terms of how great and how dominant they are at their work so this guy he's like Bad Bunny is like what 27-28 and usually your prime years are 25 through 32. I mean, depending mm -hmm. how you want to define it, but I think that it's 25 to 32. So guys like you and I, we're still in our early 30s. We're still in our prime, but we don't even feel like we're in our 30s. We still feel like we're in our 20s because of, because of how we are, how we think. Um, not the immaturity side, but in terms of like energy, fun-wise, mm -hmm. things like that. So, um, so Bad Bunny, I mean, this is his fourth album, and I don't want to go and say which of his albums is the best one, because that's a that's something that I had to like re-listen to every album again. Mm -hmm. But I would say that out of the four albums, and I know we we discussed this the other day, out of the four albums, this is my favorite one so far. I feel like Yo Hago Lo Que Me Da La Gana was the album that really made people even want to tune into him even more That's but true. yeah but and i love that album but this one is the most enjoyable album that i've ever listened to out of all bad bunny's albums and i say this one is number one for me in terms of favoritism and yo hago lo que me da la gana number two uh number three and four i don't know yet i just know that one and two those are right there lock but nice. uh what an amazing album Amazing album out of five stars. Let's go with the grading process now. Out of okay, the five stars, huh, I give this album 4.7 out of five stars. Okay. What's I yours? Think, uh, I think I'm going to. Man, you're really putting me on the spot now. I'm gonna go, I'm go I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with 4.7 as well. I'm gonna go with 4.7. I'm not gonna give it 4.8. Or four or any lower than four point seven. But four point seven, yes, I I highly agree with four point seven. Why four point seven? I'm not gonna go into detail. I'd rather <laughs> keep it to myself. But I give it a four point seven due to the fact that it's a very enjoyable album. It's a very listenable album. Um, I don't get bored throughout the album at all. Like there's not one song that like oh let me just skip this one. I don't want to listen to it now. Like I literally could put all these 23 songs on shuffle and I'm having a good time regardless. So yeah, I'll give it a solid 4.7 out of five for Bad Bunny on this one. All right, all right. I just gotta add a little side note and this has to do with the concert. I bought my tickets to go to Philly to mm. see him. However, because of my health situation and also I thought to myself, like, it was one of those things where, and I love Bad Bunny and all, but it there's just 
and a guy that has been to concert so many times, I, when the day was getting closer, I was just like, like, like the mood just wasn't in there anymore. Like to go um, and deal with, you know, a lot of noises that you, cause you know how, how concerts are. It was yeah. just, I was getting to a point where I was like, I wanted more peace, you know, mentally and things like that. Something just was just telling me like, yo, Mike, put Bad Bunny concert. And when I searched Bad Bunny concert, somebody recorded the entire concert in Philly, March 16th, that I was going to go. <laughs> oh, wow. They put the entire concert in Philly on YouTube, the same one that I was going to go to. So it was like, damn, like it all came full circle. Like, yes, it's better to be there in person, but still it all came into full circle that, you know, shit, they got the whole concert there. Um, and in the first 10 minutes, oh my God, the crowd was just rocking. It was just rocking. And I think you went to the TD Garden, right? In Boston? Yeah, in Boston, March 22nd. It was it was crazy, right? Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, the experience was uh, amazing. I, I I lost my, my friends were amazed. Like I didn't stop singing. I sang all the thirty songs that he sang that night. Um, it the performance itself was great. It wasn't like a board. It wasn't a show like oh you know he's just there on stage. Not like the performance and everything and how everything worked out was amazing. He even had a live band for the for Ultimo Tour del Mundo songs. So all the songs from there, you know, they were very rock inspired. So for him to have actual live instruments there for those songs, I was like, oh shit, no wonder. Um, even Yo Visto Asi sounded way better live than it does on, a, a, you know, on your headphones. So the performance itself, the guy's a great performer. The guy knows how to do his, his thing. Amazing to me that in that tour, he legitimately only brought out Mora for uh, Una Vez. But other than that, he did every single song by himself. And to do that, that's, that's just amazing within itself. So imagine, uh, I don't know how many tour dates he had on this tour and how many, I think he was going for like three months on tour. And for him to do that all by himself, perform the way he did, every show that he did, he brought out his 110%. And that's something you can't take away from someone who's actually succeeding and doing such a great job at their, at their craft. I recently saw an interview he did at The View. And I'm not crazy about the show, The View. Some of these talk shows I don't pay too much attention to. But Me when neither. I saw but when I saw the, the title that Bad Bunny, you know, went to The View, I was like, oh shit. So let me click on it. And one thing that he said that that um that made me respect his work ethic even more is that after the Met Gala, he went right back to work. And usually when you go to uh, an event, you just want to go to the event and bam, that's it. After the event is over, go back home mm -hmm. and sleep. But no, this man, he said with the same outfit that he wore at the Met Gala, he went straight to work after the Met Gala. I mean, that just goes to show his craft, man. Like when he wants to do something, he'll do it. He'll put his 110%. I don't know if you were aware about him getting ready for the WrestleMania match also that he even rented a home in, in Florida so he could be closer to the performance center so he could go there and train every day. I think the only time he stepped out was for the Grammy, if I'm not mistaken. But other than that, um, he was, he was you know, practicing to make sure that he put on the best performance possible. And again, how could you not respect that? How could you not respect that from an artist, an actor, an actress, whatever, whatever crap they're doing, how can you not respect the work ethic? And I think um, the work ethic shows in the projects, in the albums, and everything that he does, just by just him, him being him. So, again, it, it, I'm a huge fan. I will never stop being a fan. Um, I, I I love all the music. I love everything that he's doing, and it's all winning. It's all. It, it, he's not only winning for himself, but he's winning also for the Spanish speaking community as well, because it, I feel like he's one of the only Latin artists who's representing all of us overall in such a positive note. 